Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Matt Rozak. I am co-founder and chairman of Block. We're a blockchain technology company. And uh, it's awesome to be here in Miami at the North American Bitcoin Conference. Uh, this is the seventh year. And that's like, uh, uh, it blew me away because I was like, Mo, what have you been doing this? Like five years, maybe six? And this, this seven-year cycle has been uh, amazing to watch. And the first one here in Miami, uh, I remember uh, Vitalik walking around with a freshly printed uh, white paper and all these guys walking around with Ethereum t-shirts and so many historical elements uh, throughout the years. It's been uh, amazing to watch. So uh, let's give a round of applause to, uh, to Mo. So a little background on Block. Uh, we go to market in two different ways, uh, through Block Enterprise and Block Labs. Uh, Block Enterprise is infrastructure, Block Labs is innovation. So in terms of infrastructure, we build uh, wallets and nodes, Block Explorers, a lot of the plumbing and guts uh, for blockchain networks. Uh, and our customers are twofold. So a lot of the, the Fortune 50, so banks, credit card companies, asset managers. Uh, uh, at the same time, we have this burgeoning uh, customer group called the Crypto 50, miners, exchanges, payment processors, uh, protocols uh, that all need the same type of infrastructure. And so, um, but uh, in building that infrastructure, we, we also see a lot and uh, uh, we get to, uh, to innovate and kind of tinker and, uh, and st uh, start up new uh, businesses. And that's where uh, Block Lab co uh, comes in. Uh, about two years ago, we launched Metronome, a new autonomous cryptocurrency. Uh, last year, Veriblock was launched. And our new uh, Block Labs business is called Titan. It's uh, mining software, a network, and uh, ultimately a protocol. And, and mining is super interesting. Uh, my my co-founder, Jeff Garzik, wrote one of the first uh, uh, mining pools, one of the first uh, miners. And so we've got a lot of DNA and history in the mining space. One of our uh, investors at Block is Bitmain. And so we've been around this hoop a lot, and it's interesting to see the evolution of mining, where it's uh, going to start out as this, this hobbyist business where you're, you're mining off your uh, computer, you're looking at your Bitcoin balance or your, your power bill to see if you're making money. And look at mining now. It's, it's, it's a real industry. You got Kanan uh, gone, gone public, you got Bitmain filed to go public, so it's getting a little bit more institutional. Um, but then the future state of mining is going to get really interesting uh, in terms of how this turns into critical infrastructure and this, this uh, uh, harnessing and, and underpinning money and data uh, is going to be more and more of, uh, of a thing outside of this, this crypto sphere. And you think about compute and AI and that whole uh, extension of, of uh, what miners can do uh, gets pretty profound. And you think about proof-of-work mining, so the, the, the algorithm that underpins uh, Bitcoin's security. And uh, I think Bitcoin has won the store of value, you know, the digital gold piece. Uh, but the dimensions on Bitcoin are, are very interesting because you think about uh, Bitcoin and uh, store of value digital gold, payments with Lightning, um, smart contracting with RSK and, and sidechains. But if you look at the kind of the security route of, of Bitcoin. This is the most secure uh, protocol on the planet. All the miners, all the resources, that cooperative um, that's, that's uh, underpinning Bitcoin is pretty profound. And so, yeah, it's, it's store value and all this other stuff, but it also has this potential to be a security route uh, for the next web, to underpin and secure these new networks. And you, see, you heard uh, Blo uh, Veriblock yesterday talk about how they um, use Bitcoin security as a service. And uh, I think that future is going to be, uh, continue to be brighter and brighter going forward. But to get that uh, security root future and to unpack that, mining needs to, to evolve and, and continue to change. So how, uh, how do we get there? Uh, today, mining is still kind of a, uh, a street fight. It's kind of brute force. There's some centralization, top four or five pools about 80% of the mining uh, hash rate. Um, over time, to, to create better accessibility, uh, not only for like saying, oh, this is gonna get financialized for Wall Street, but also for miners and these transaction processors to have better risk management, better liquidity, access to capital. This, this financial, 
financialization dynamic is, is going to be very important for uh, how mining evolves. Sorry, this is, uh, oh, okay, so, so on this one, and, and so it's, to unpack that, the, the really the, the key tenants uh, you need is stability, is like to have a stable hash rate, a consistent hash rate that comes out of a particular mine. And I'm always amazed, uh, especially today, beyond Keenan and Bitmain on the, on the public side, how many pitch decks I see uh, on people uh, saying I have access to cheap energy and I want to buy a bunch of miners. And this industrial mining, uh, this cottage industry continues to grow uh, at, at an amazing pace right now. And if you think about where, where revenue is being generated in crypto, exchanges and miners. You know, that's, that's the, uh, the big, I would say, the two you know, cash juggernauts that are generating any type of a P&L. Uh, but again, the stability, the accessibility in terms of uh, access to mining, and mining is open to, to everybody, but at the same time, how do you do that with a, uh, a different ca uh, cost structure and not have to buy rigs and a facility and access to power? And so there's also this potential for, uh, I could see uh, you know, this, this Bitcoin ETF is uh, uh, this arm wrestling match that's happening in terms of when it's going to happen or not happen. Uh, I also think there's going to be a hash rate or a hash power ETF. You could almost imagine that as a proxy for the health of, uh, of this network. Uh, and then the transparency. I think transparency in mining is uh, okay to good and it should be great uh, in terms of uh, mining pools and that whole uh, ecosystem and how uh, uh, people have fidelity into uh, uh, how the economics of mining work. And so to, to try and bring all this into focus, we, um, uh, we spent the last year co-founding uh, uh, Titan. So Titan is the first spin-out uh, of Block Labs. Uh, and the CEO is Ryan Condren, uh, who's going to come up here uh, momentarily. I met Ryan uh, three, four years ago. Uh, and Ryan was uh, part of the team that built Coin Wars, Rig Wars, Pool Wars. These were the algorithms that you would point your miner to yield the best uh, outcome on a particular pool or token. And so a lot of those smarts, uh, my co-founder Jeff Garzik with uh, some of the stuff that he built in the earliest days of Bitcoin, uh, this, this uh, felt more of like a reflex to, uh, to start Titan. And uh, we don't touch miners. This is all about the software layer to make miners more money, uh, save cost. Uh, and then also uh, think about a marketplace where hash power could be traded like, uh, like energy. And so without further ado, uh, I want to introduce uh, Ryan Condren of Titan. Thanks, here you go. All right. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks, Matt. So now I get the fun part. Um, I'm glad some people came and uh, survived the rain out there in Miami, oddly enough. Uh, so I get to talk about Titan. Uh, Titan is a vision that we have for the mining space. Um, my name is Ryan Condren, CEO of Titan Industries. Uh, I got involved in the space in 2012. Uh, a good buddy of mine came to me and told me about this crazy thing called Bitcoin. Uh, and then we started looking into it and we found this really cool process called mining. And I don't know how many of you have uh, mined before or gotten into mining. Um, we built our first uh, mining rig. Uh, we ordered on uh, some website and bought a bunch of GPUs. Uh, we found some altcoins also, and we started building out mining rigs. And we got our first payout. And we built out more mining rigs, and we got our first block reward. And this is 2012, and we're just, we're just excited to be part of the process at this point. Uh, we start looking in the ecosystem, we start realizing that there's a lot of gaps. There's a lot of things that we can build and we can help out the community. Uh, we started building out profitability calculators. We started building, about, building out uh, hardware comparison sites, uh, started building out mining pools, started building out cloud mining software. And uh, th through the years, we started trying to adapt the technology, build out better software. But unfortunately, we're 10, 11 years into this industry, and the software still isn't where it needs to be. So I want to talk about the future of where we see the mining space to be, where we think uh, it really needs to go. And it kind of touches on the three pillars that Matt touched on, were stability, accessibility, and transparency. Uh, but before I talk about the future, I want to kind of rewind a little bit. I want to step back 100 years. Okay. And now, I know it sounds crazy to go back to 1920 to talk about the future of mining, but if I took you guys back to 1920 and I pointed to an automobile, 
And now the car at this point had only been around for about 30 years. And if I point to an automobile and I tried to explain to you what this industry would look like 100 years from now, you'd probably think I was absolutely insane. If I tried to explain to you what the manufacturing was going to look like, if I tried to explain to you what freeways were going to look like, if I tried to explain to you what traffic in LA looked like during rush hour, you would think I was absolutely insane. If I tried to explain to you what the DMV, the Department of Motor Vehicles here in the States was, um, it just it wouldn't make sense. Now, what if in 1920 I then pointed to an airplane? Airplanes that had only been around for about 15 years at this point. Uh, probably a better parallel to the blockchain technology that we're working with. And if I tried to explain to you in 100 years what airline travel was going to look like, if I tried to explain to you what airports looked like, airport security, the TSA, uh, missing your flight because you're stuck in security, if I tried to explain to you that there were people that would spend the majority of their lives traveling from conference to conference on airplanes, seeing the same people around the world, you'd probably think in 1920 I was crazy. Unfortunately, a lot of you are living that reality right now. So let's fast forward now, 2020. Now let's talk about the future of mining. With Titan, we're focused on not just making mines work better, we're focused on making mining work better. We're starting with stability, with better software. Then we're going to be moving into a marketplace to great, provide greater accessibility. And then we want to touch on a protocol, basically moving everything into this decentralized ecosystem. And what that looks like is kind of our three phases. I'm going to walk you through it. And this isn't just a product pitch. I want to explain to you a vision of where we think mining needs to be. And whether we build it ourselves or you guys build it, this is where we think it needs to go. Okay. Um, so first off, the, the phase one is the Titan software. Um, I used this analogy before. I do a lot of random reading, and I don't know if it's a good analogy or not, but I came across a pamphlet, uh, a government-produced uh, pamphlet on how to survive an anaconda attack. Okay, <laughs> completely random, um, so just bear with me here. There is a, a point to this analogy. Um, step one in how to survive an anaconda attack. If you do not learn anything else at this conference, you can claim that you learned this. Step one, hold perfectly still, because the anaconda will start to swallow you from the feet up. Step two, let the anaconda start to swallow you from the feet up. It will work its way up to your waist. Uh, step three, it will continue to work its way up to your chest. Step four, when the anaconda gets to your chest, take your knife, plunge it through the anaconda, and rip the knife up towards your chest. Step five, make sure you have a knife and make sure it's very sharp. Something's out of order. We've done the same thing in the mining industry. Step one, find a fancy little toaster that can mine very, very quickly and get a lot of them. Step two, find a facility to put all your little toasters in. Step three, get a power contract to be able to run these little toasters. Step four, get a management team to shove all these little toasters in a facility in the middle of nowhere and have really good software to uh, get it going. Step five, make sure your software is good and make sure it can manage everything to make sure that you're actually profitable. We have things out of order. Unfortunately, we're 10 years into an industry, 11 years into an industry, and we just do not have proper management software at scale. So this is what Titan is proposing. This is what we've been working on for the past year, is good management software. Our software actually takes a network. It turns it into a plug-and-play environment. The moment you plug your device in, our software discovers the device. It logs into the device. It configures it and begins mining with it. Um, as it mines with it, we run benchmark tests, and then we start doing clocking and fan speed controls to make sure the device is optimized, and then we do real-time monitoring of the device, and all you had to do was plug the device in. We have this really cool thing called software these days that can automate a lot of stuff, and we should be using it. Unfortunately, we find that a lot of mines these days are actually running very manual, and this is actually incredibly scary, because if you realize that the, the networks that we are all working on in this industry, the majority of them are proof of work, which means that they are run by these facilities called mines. And if you look at how these mines are actually run for stability reasons, it's actually shockingly uh, scary. So stability, phase one, is providing better software. Now, there are a lot of good software products out there. I don't want you to believe that this is the only option. But this is our vision for good software. And that's where we believe step one is stability. Now, phase two, step two, is once we have good management software, once we have stability, we're going to be moving 
into a marketplace. So now you can actually route your hashing power using our management software. You can route your hashing power through a marketplace. And this provides accessibility. There's a lot of people that want to get into mining that don't have access to cheap electricity or the hardware that they need. So now they can actually get into a marketplace and our customers using the Titan software can actually create hash rate products. They can sell their hash rate in the form of cloud hashing software, or I'm sorry, cloud, cloud hashing contracts, or they can sell it in the form of device rentals. Okay. So now we have accessibility. People can get into the mining market. They can purchase hash power without actually ever having to touch a miner. But that only gets you so far, and this is where I get really excited because phase three is where we actually make a difference. Because if you think about it, what are we working with? We're working with networks that are decentralized, distributed, and trustless. And what do we have happening in mining? We have less decentralization than ever before, we have less distribution than ever before, and we're having to trust mining pools and miners like we've never had to trust them before to run these networks. So how do we keep networks that are decentralized, distributed, and trustless that way? Well, we propose that we keep it decentralized, distributed, and trustless by making mining decentralized, distributed, and trustless. So what we've done is we've re redesigned how we build a network node, and we've released the white paper on our website, titan.io. And essentially what we do is we created a layer zero protocol. It's basically a protocol that sits between a miner and a network, and it acts as a smart contract routing layer. Okay, so all the hashing power from a miner rolls through that network node, and it references smart contracts to know how to route the hashing power, packet by packet, share by share. Now we actually build a cryptographic proof around each share, and we use those cryptographic proofs to trustlessly drive smart contracts. Now if you've tracked with me this far, you'll realize that we're building something really cool. Because once you can trustlessly prove that hash rate not only exists, but it has been delivered, we can take our marketplace from phase two, we can move it into a series of decentralized smart contracts, and now we have a peer-to-peer -peer global hash rate exchange that's completely decentralized, distributed, and trustless. But that's just our product. We want to build a protocol for everyone else to build on, because it's not just us providing this marketplace. It's everyone else in the industry that wants to buy and sell, that wants to create financial products out of hash rate. And not only that, if you think about what hash rate actually is, it's just transformed electricity. Because the reality is, we're not just burning electricity to get coins. We're actually translating electricity into a commodity called hash power. And there's a direct ratio between the two. So we could actually buy and sell electricity in the form of hash power through this trustless system. That's a really cool concept. Now we've just blown open the entire energy, energy trade in a decentralized, distributed, and trustless manner. And that's what we want to do with Titan, is we want to create the future of mining through the financialization of hash power. So that's the third pillar. So the first one was stability, second was accessibility, and the third is transparency. Because believe it or not, we don't have a whole lot of transparency in mining right now. We don't know where the hash power is coming from. We don't know how payouts are necessarily happening at the pool. Who's auditing the pools? How is all this done? Once we move this into an open ecosystem, into an actual protocol network, it's transparent. And that's what we want to do with Titan. Now, the financialization of hash power. Now, I've seen a lot of you guys, actually a lot of conferences around the world. Um, we, we fly to conferences time and time again, we run into the same people, uh, we become friends. Um, believe it or not, this is the industry. You know, we are the industry. We are literally building the network ecosystem that is going to be running the backbone of not only currency, but identity, data security, and the future internet. The people sitting next to you at the tables right now are the very future of what this is going to be. And that is not a light thing. Every single idea you have, extrapolated 100 years from now, will change the world. Every single little project, every little single side thing that you want to do is going to make a huge impact. In 1920, if you had an idea about an automobile and you kept doing it for 100 years, think about where you'd be today. Well, that's where you're sitting right now with blockchain. With Titan, we want to revolutionize the way hashing power works, the way the energy sector works, 
We'd love for you to partner with us on it. We'd love for your feedback on it. Uh, once again, my name is Ryan Condren with Titan.io. Please check out our white paper. Please uh, let us know what you think, and uh, let's change things. Thank you.